Alrighty, hello everyone. So this is going to be your video for how to do self lymphatic drainage massage, which is going to be uh, 100 times more efficient, more effective, um, more appropriate way of using a massage gun rather than just simply saying, hey, you know what, my bicep's sore, so I'm just going to put the gun right into my bicep and just plow around in there um, as deep as I can. And hey, it'll feel better afterwards, so I must be doing something. And it is doing something, but it's not always appropriate, especially when we're talking about dealing with DOMS, so like you're really sore after a workout. Just simply putting the massage gun into the sore bits, that can help a little bit with circulation. It does help with pain a bit for a very short period of time. It doesn't actually do much in the way of helping you to recover better, to feel less pain down the road. So we're thinking more long-term. We can't be so short-sighted. If something only gives you pain relief for 30 seconds, if you're in a lot of pain, that is worth something. However, when we're talking in the context of exercise, it's not really worth anything at all. So when we're using this, there's a few rules that we have to go by. So we're going to spend about the next 10 minutes or so going over rules, going over how to use this appropriately, kind of um, the ideas behind it and why this is so effective for what we're doing. And then I will have a timestamp showing, like if you want to zoom on through to the massage bed, you can totally do that. So. One of the most important things with using any kind of massage tool, whether that's a gun, a ball, or foam roller, or what have you, is you have to be gentle. You cannot create pain with this stuff. You can experience pain sometimes to figure out, it's like, oh, that's really sore there. Like if I press into the um, top of my pec, and it's like, okay, there's no pain, but if I go in a little bit of pressure, okay, maybe there's some pain. And I kind of find out, you know, there's some blockage um, issues there, things aren't flowing quite right, things are inflamed, because ideally I should be able to push into my muscles quite hard, go down to the bone, and I don't feel any pain. That's ideal. That's showing that you have optimal muscle health. If you push in a little bit, um, whether this is your top of the pec, um, the top of your traps, your forearm muscles, you just put a little bit of pressure to create a little bit of massage, and that's really painful. That's not normal. That's extremely common. And this is a um, big theme with me and my mobility work. It's like just because something is common doesn't mean it's normal. The vast majority of people live in chronic pain. Um, vast majority of runners and other athletes have chronic pain. That's not normal. I don't care about how common it is. Uh, it affects approximately 80% um, of the population, maybe a little bit more. Um, in theory, that's not normal. I wouldn't care if it was 99%. That's still not normal. The default state of the human body is strong, athletic, pain-free, and has full range of motion and instantaneous access to his or her own athleticism. So when we're doing this, we have to be, make sure that we are being really gentle. This is super important. Um, and it's for any kind of massage care, but especially for a massage gun, especially because some of you are going to be using a hard massage head. You can hear how hard that is. Very firm. Ideally, I want one that's really soft, but I'll get to that in a bit. Part of the reason, and there's a couple of reasons why we have to be super gentle. This isn't just like dogma on it. There's physiological, anatomical, biological, um, metabolical reasons for this. And this is so important. Number one, we are primarily affecting very intentionally and directly our lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system, veins and your nodes, basically run alongside your veins. How superficial are your veins? They're literally right there. You can often see them. They are just underneath the skin. They are not deep structures. So if I wanted to massage my veins, I'm not going to try to go deep into the muscles. I'm going to be right on the skin and apply very gentle, very um, superficial massage to it. Lymph vessels run right alongside the veins. You can't necessarily see them. Um, you can feel the lymph nodes, though, especially underneath your jaw. They still um, almost like little berries, like little grapes um, up underneath the jaw or even your tonsils. Those are all lymph nodes, and they're always very superficially, um, except kind of in the upper thigh. Um, they're not very deep at all, so you don't want to get deep into the muscles. So let's say that you know I wanted to be working around my elbow and up underneath my bicep. Say my bicep's really sore, and I wanted to do an effective massage to help alleviate the soreness for a long-term approach. Um, what's going to happen is that I'm going to be thinking about just massaging out the skin on top of it. I'm not trying to uh, ram this into the bicep as hard as I bloody can. I need to be superficial and I need to be gentle. You should never experience pain when you're doing this. Only gentle pressure. It's very important. That's key to making this work. Um, why else is that super important? 
when you create stress, when you create pain inside your body, that works to clench these vessels. So all, all of your lymph vessels are surrounded by what's called efferent nerve vessels as opposed to afferent nerve vessels. Um, and they're sympathetic nerve vessels. Actually, forget the afferent, efferent. That was not relevant. I misspoke there. They're surrounded by sympathetic nerves. That means that when you become stressed, they activate and they work to clench. This is a survival response. When you are stressed out, your veins and your lymph vessels, um, they constrict. So this helps to increase your blood pressure. And it also helps, um, like thinking like, not even necessarily evolutionarily speaking, but if you are in a fight and you get cut, you won't bleed out as well. You won't bleed out as fast, hopefully. As long as they didn't get deep and make an artery, in which case you will bleed out um, at least a lot more. So we always want this to be gentle and very relaxing so that our uh, blood pressure stays relatively low. It should be appropriately, um, appropriately low. You should not be stressed out by this at all. And that involves creating pain. Don't create pain, only gentle pressure. Um, running alongside that theme, what kind of head do you use? Because these things come off. Most massage guns do have um, multiple heads that they come with. Typically, they will come with a flat head. Now, there's another brand. This one wasn't the best, but this is one I always go with. This is named Siggy. Uh, by the way, I highly recommend them because they're often on discount on Amazon for 30 quid, which is like some of the cheapest massage guns. And it works the same as anyone. I've been using this for about two months. It It's fantastic. It works great. Plus, it has a battery monitor on the back, which I, I don't see that much in massage guns. It's pretty, it's pretty fab. You want to use the softest uh, massage head possible. Usually, these things come with a ball, which is like a dense foam. That can work well, especially when you're working around the bones, like your collarbones. Oh, here's another reason why we want to be super soft and gentle and be in a habit of doing it like that. We are going to be massaging up underneath our jawbone and on our throat or on, on our neck. If you are in the habit of going really hard and just being like, I have to get it in there as deep as possible because of reasons, you are going to seriously hurt yourself and it's not going to be a good idea. And then you get this poor association as like, oh, doing a lymphatic massage with a massage gun, that's not, you know, that's not quality. It's not good to do. You should not do that. In fact, and it's like, no, you just did it really poorly. So, which is why I'm putting out this video to teach you how to do it correctly. Um, so use the soft massage gun. The ideal head that I like is one that's shaped kind of like this, but it's made out of rubber and it's hollow. So it has a, um, a good bit of give. It's very gentle. Um, and the vibration is like minimized in that because there's a lot of air in it and that gets dispersed much more effectively because it compresses. So 20 to 30 seconds on any given part of the body. So we're going to be going over um, the big six, which is a term describing um, the major lymphatic node zones that was described by um, Dr. Perry Nicholson. If you do not follow him, get on Instagram and search for at Stop Chasing Pain. That's Dr. Perry Nicholson's account. Highly recommend if you are into physiology at all, if you're into fitness, you need to check out his stuff. He goes over a lot of like, how do I do lymphatic massage with my hands or maybe with like a pencil eraser, which works really well because it's grippy. All the best massage tools are grippy. Um, highly recommend giving him a follow. He's a fantastic and absolute uh, brilliant um, scientist and physician. So no more than 20 to 30 seconds in any given part. We want to stimulate the areas. We do not want to numb them. We do not want to overload them. So one of the issues with using massage guns that people have is like, okay, so my bicep's sore, so I'm just going to put it right into the bicep, right into the middle of the soreness and just work around that. I'm going to get deep into it and do it for like minutes at a time. And what happens with that is that it can help with pain, but it does so via creating numbness. The working theory here is that you're just overloading the nerves and they go numb. It's the exact same thing as when you use a lawnmower for enough time and your hands go numb. So what do you do? You get these gloves that have like, it's almost like bubble wrap on them. They have these um, air filled sacks dotted all over the um, polymer side of them. And you can use that and helps to um, disperse the vibration, the vibrational forces from passing through your hand so you don't go as numb and you can work with it a little bit longer. So if you create numbness, you do help to manage pain technically, but that does nothing to actually help to heal. Um, I find that when people do this to help with soreness, like post-workout soreness, it lasts for maybe a few minutes and that's it. If you do this appropriately, appropriately and you keep up with lymphatic massage, that gives you benefits that last for the rest of the day, 
easily, especially if you can do it a couple times. This takes five to 10 minutes to go through for the whole body. You can stick to upper body or lower body if you need to. But point is that um, you spend 30 seconds on each bit and you are good to go for hours. It's extremely, it's extraordinarily effective. So um, definitely don't go any more than one minute. That's important. Uh, if you start to go into like the one minute or two minutes, we're just getting distracted maybe and we're staying on one local area at a time for an extended period of time, you can damage the lymph nodes. Again, these are very superficial. If you're getting distracted, you might start going in too deep and just not notice it. Don't get distracted. Like put your phone down when you're doing this. Focus on what's going on in the moment. Um, yeah, so just 20 to 30 seconds. It doesn't take long at all. You're trying to increase the circulation. You're not trying to damage anything and you're not trying to stress it out, which will just decrease the circulation. Um, when you're going around a bone, which this is primarily appropriate around the collarbones and also the inside of your um, elbow, I believe this is the medial epicondyle. My bone marking anatomy is really rusty. But I'm pretty sure that's your epicondyle. Someone can comment in the comments if that's right. I'm um, pretty sure epicondyle is on the elbow. It's on the humerus. I might be wrong. Anyway, it's not important. Point is that um, what I like to do, I usually don't go like the flat head straight in to the tissues. What I'll do is I'll use the corner of it. Gives you a lot less surface area to work with. Still just as effective in terms of vibration, the percussion getting into your body, but it makes it really easy to go around bone. So going around the inside of the elbow can be a little bit tricky and it can hurt if you hit that bone wrong. You can hit, um, that'll be your ulnar nerve, which like when we talk about hitting your funny bone and your arm like goes dead and it's really aggravating. Yeah, so that you want to avoid that as much as you can. Once you are done with this, you want to get up and move. Um, walk around, do some squats, do some leg swings, do, do some torso twists, um, shoulder circles, head circles. It doesn't matter. And this is a part of I'm not going to provide an actual guide except for this bit. Just move. Try not to think about it. Definitely don't overthink of how should I move. Just move. Just get up, turn your brain off, and just feel your body moving super important here um okay so you can skip on to the massage bit which will be coming up in a few minutes naturally i'm going to spend a couple minutes just talking about the lymphatic system so those are your rules basically be gentle and short and sweet 20 to 30 seconds per part that's the big thing how does this work um we are going to be working to actually jiggle around through vibration um our major lymph node zones so your lymph which carries through a lot of the what we'll say is waste products out of your metabolism so your blood goes out of your heart, that distributes um, nutritious blood, healthy blood. Now that the veins carry unhealthy blood, I don't really like that phrase. I'm going to stop saying it. So uh, your blood uh, squirts out nutritious blood out into your body. It gets squeezed out of your arteries, um, into your um, out of your arterioles, and it enters what's called your interstitial space. Fancy term for your insides, but outside of the blood vessels. This is where your metabolism happens. So it gets squeezed out of your blood vessels. And now your cells can receive the nutrition. Metabolism happens. There are byproducts from metabolism. Um, there are going to be damaged structures in your interstitial, interstitial space that need to get repaired. And there are going to be byproducts from that, including like damaged cells, damaged structures. Um, there's going to be bacteria in there. There's going to be viruses in there, heavy metals, pesticides, fungi, mold, um, and other pathogens, other stuff that needs like big chunky things that need to be taken out and removed. That gets absorbed into your lymph, which is like the most, um, by volume, like the biggest amount of fluid in your body. So where the average adult human being has something like five liters of blood in their body, we have about 15 liters of lymph. So three times the amount of uh, lymph and interstitial fluid when we do blood. It's really important. And this takes things up into your lymph vessels where they pass through lymph nodes. Now, this is primarily where your immune system functions. Those lymph nodes kind of act as uh, stirring pots where white blood cells can come in and eat things and stuff, all that stuff that I listed before can get filtered out of your body that can be appropriately disposed of. Um, if these parts become overwhelmed because you live a very sick lifestyle, if you are um, chronically sick, chronically inflamed, and this stuff just has a lot more work to do, if you are sedentary, because these vessels, they don't pump themselves. Remember like your veins, your veins are almost um, pretty much identical to your lymph vessels. So they transport stuff back to your heart for redis uh, redistribution, but um, they need your muscles to be massaging them in order to move appropriately. Think like a varicose vein, 
uh, it happens typically with sedentary people, where um, especially in the legs, it can happen theor theoretically, you can get varicose veins anywhere in the body or spider veins, um, but we see them primarily in the legs. Why? Because any part of your body that's below the heart, the fluid there has to pump up against gravity to get there. Ideally, walking takes care of this, and your calves act as pumps to keep pumping fluids um, up your legs, back up your belly, um, through your abdomen, and back up to your heart. That's ideal. However, when you have an office setting or you're just sedentary, you don't move around a whole lot, this can, over time, stagnate. So now the fluids, thinking about varicose veins, the fluids uh, build up in the veins and the structures, causes them to stretch out. Now the valves that are meant to prevent backflow become stretched out and damaged, and now there can be backflow, and now things just um, accumulate. They become stagnant. So thinking in terms of the lymph vessels, if you get lymphedema, so swelling in your lymph vessels, what happens when those bacteria, the viruses, heavy metals, pesticides, etc., become stagnant? No, they're stuck there. Um, when this happens, this is correlative, but people who have a lot of issues in this way, they tend to have um, high blood pressure. They tend to be very stagnant people. And part of having high blood pressure, this is a, a component of it, I'm not saying this is the cause, but a component of it is that you don't have... Um, as much of a repelling nature between your red blood cells, meaning that red blood cells should be coated in electrons, which would have a negative charge. When they are all coated in negative charges, they repel each other, which reduces the viscosity of your blood and tremendously helps with uh, blood pressure management. So especially if you're stressed out, um, that's part of why walking around barefoot outside in the grass is so incredibly important because you absorb those electrons out of the earth. All mammals do, um, all living things do. So. That helps a lot, but if you don't have that a lot, that going on a lot, there's a lot more viscosity in your blood. Things can coagulate a lot more. This um, increases risk factor for things like clots. And you can actually see on an electron microscope, powerful enough to actually see the red blood cells and the white blood cells, you can see how things um, coagulate together. Think about it being the case as like with a river or stream, how there would be water going through, but it primarily goes through the middle. What do you see on the outskirts of the stream often? is a lot of foliage and sometimes even litter if it's a dirty enough area and it all kind of accumulates off to the side but you have you still have fine flow going through the middle that's fine like we're not completely cutting off our circulation anywhere it's a very gradual decrease in circulation in parts um, but they're still going like right through the middle and that's kind of how we imagine lymph vessels and lymph nodes working so if all that crap is getting stuck out to the sides of the lymph nodes your body can't get to them as well they're still provoking a stress response and it can make your body very sick because you're just perpetuating a fight or flight response. Your immune system is stressed out, um, it's overactive. Things can't get to where they need to be. Can't access them as well. There's a lot more fight going in your body than there needs to be. Um, so when we jiggle them around, we quite literally, like imagine that stream analogy, quite literally like if we just push that uh, crap out into the middle, now it, can, um, now it can flow. And that's what we're attempting to do here. So. Um, you'll have seen a picture on the side here at some point of this, at least that shows like the, um, major lymphatic nodes or node zones. These are, this is going to be all that we are massaging out and that's it. You don't need any more than that. So 20, 30 seconds on each part, the upcoming video is going to go over just like one half of your body, obviously repeat on the other side as needed. Uh, the video content's going to show things up for like a minute, but remember it's only 20 to 30 seconds per part. Sometimes I'll just need extra time to kind of talk through things about what you're doing in that area and how to be safe. So without going any further, uh, video is going to be starting right at about 19 minutes exactly. So guys, enjoy. Alrighty, so for this first part, we're going to focus on the collarbones. What you're going to want to do is actually find the collarbone. I recommend people actually trace it out so you you know, really know where it is. And you're going to spend some time working just beneath it, like think right in the middle on the collarbone itself. And then you're going to get behind the collarbone as if you're trying to get down actually behind it. For the next part, we're going to work up into the neck and into the jaw, thinking about like the corner of the jaw, um, actually like where you chew where your masseter is, um, and then getting behind your ear. So you can start off working behind the ear, getting up underneath the jaw, and then working down your neck, kind of on either side of your Adam's apple. Um, I like to start off underneath the jaw, work down the neck, and then get into the back corner of your jaw, kind of where your uh, chewing muscles are, your masseter muscle. Uh, and just make sure you're super gentle. This is your neck we're talking about. Do not apply deep pressure. 
for this part of your anatomy, you're, we are going to be working up underneath your pec, down your upper arm, underneath the bicep, and then up around the elbow. So for this first part, you actually try to get the massage gun underneath your pec muscles. So you're actually trying to get um, like to the rib cage underneath the pec. Uh, that's where the major vessels are. And then you're going to move out into the armpit. And yes, I actually want you to massage out your actual armpit. Get up in there. There's a lot of vessels that go through there, nerves, blood vessels, lymph vessels, and, um, and veins, and they need a lot of love. Next up, go underneath the bicep, working all the way to the end of the elbow. Just be careful around the elbow bone down there. It's very easy to hit yourself hard with the massage gun and kind of hurt yourself, so be careful. For this part of the lymph massage, we're actually going to get into your belly, and this is often really weird for people if you have never had an abdominal massage before. Basically, I like to divide it up into three sections, right up the middle, up to the left underneath the ribs, and up to the right underneath the ribs, getting up underneath the liver and the spleen. And these are structures that really need to move a lot. They're supposed to move a lot when you just simply breathe, but if you have a sedentary lifestyle, they're not going to move around that much. Apply pressure in there. You can typically get fairly deep in there. Just, of course, be gentle. Don't create pain. If it's really weird at first, it will start to feel normal after some time. You just have to give it some practice cover the rest of the anatomy in this little part, we're going to start off in the hip crease. If you just simply find the edge of your hip bone, that's kind of what I'm indicating there, and then working down towards your groin, spend a few seconds working in there. Uh, that tends to be a fairly delicate area, so be really gentle. For this next part, we're going to get up into the inner thigh. Now, if you have um, man manly anatomy, you're going to want to grab your anatomy and actually pull it all to the other side because you really want to get deep um, into the inner thigh. You got a big muscle there called your adductor magnus, biggest muscle of your inner thigh. And if you can get really deep around it, so basically right in the middle at the very top next to your groin, uh, you can do a lot of lymphatic work in there. And then spend a good minute working down the thigh. Uh, just It's a larger surface area, so it gets a little bit more time. And then we're going to end this with the back of the knee. Be super gentle here. This can make people feel, it can sometimes just feel kind of funny. So be very gentle. Remember, you're only massaging out the skin.